Well, just a few weeks ago, we learned Indiana's school voucher program has an expected price tag of $81 million this year. Is that a steep price to pay for parental choice? Or is that a small price to pay to help low- and middle-income children succeed where they wouldn't in a public school? Last night, News 18's Dan Klein looked at how Indiana's school choice program brought school freedom for one family, along with its effect on local schools and Indiana's education funding. And Dan joins us now for part two of a News 18 special report looking at the cost of vouchers. Dan? Well, Jeff, Gina, with less than three years of data, there's been no comparison of testing data between voucher and non-voucher students. While students in other locations like New York City or Milwaukee show some positive results, others say you can't trust what you read. Vouchers are music to the ears of nearly 20,000 parents and students across Indiana, including Bianca Garcia. She and her brother Giovanni are two of 68 voucher students at Lafayette Christian School, coming here after several years in public school. I think it's a good experience from public school. I wasn't happy with the public school they were going to. The teachers, they push you to the limit to what you can go. While results are limited in Indiana, vouchers have been in place far longer in other locations. Data collected by the Indianapolis-based nonprofit Friedman Foundation for Educational Choice point to nearly a dozen studies with positive gains for voucher students. In places like Milwaukee, New York City, and Charlotte, North Carolina, studies show single-digit gains for voucher students over control groups. And a 2010 study in Washington, D.C. showed even if students were just offered a voucher, they graduated at 82 percent, 12 points better than the control group. Students who actually used the voucher graduated at a rate 20 points higher. The attainment data is extremely positive, and the achievement data is showing small but statistically significant gains. But results are mixed. That same D.C. study showed no test score gains for voucher students. And several Friedman cited studies only show gains for African American students. Other groups showed no gains at all. And in 2011, Milwaukee voucher students scored nine points below low income students in math. But proponents say smaller class size and school safety are just as important factors for school choice. So I think education is much more than merely test scores. Voucher opponents like Indiana's Teacher Association say those mixed results show voucher programs are only taking money away from public schools without providing real returns, something that should be clearly evident after more than two decades of research. We've just not seen that um, here, and the results are so limited anywhere else that I think it has yet to be seen. There's no evidence anywhere in the world that would show you that using school choice will actually improve public education. Instead, they believe money would be best spent elsewhere, addressing the root of the problem, whether it's shrinking class sizes, helping teachers develop their craft, or boosting early childhood education. Is it really to support a student's academic learning in a different way, or is it an attempt to begin to water down and break down uh, public schools? According to Purdue researchers, Indiana is spending less on K-12 education now than any time in the last 15 years, from 2.7 percent in the general fund in 1997 to 2.2 percent in 2012. Some districts are raising extra money of their own. West Lafayette is halfway through a seven-year tax referendum passed in 2010, which has kept the district from seeing major changes in the educational experience for its children. I can tell you point blank, without the referendum in our community uh, supporting our school district, we would not have the arts, we would not have uh, PE, we would not have sports in the school district. Seventh grade voucher student Mary Lisi gets both PE and band at Lafayette Christian. She had a good experience in public school and has siblings who never left, but personally wanted the freedom to grow in her faith in the classroom, not just at home. I think I needed like the Christian education and just before I go out to high school and college. It definitely has been a very beneficial, you know, piece for her and, and, and she's grown a lot and we're glad for that. And Bianca, who plays saxophone one row behind Mary's flute, is glad as well. So is her mother. The Garcia children qualify for a federal free and reduced lunch and so receive a 90% taxpayer voucher from Indiana. But having seen the difference from public education, their mother says her kids would stay here even if vouchers were not available. That's not what I said before I came to Lafayette Christian, but after my experience, it's been so good to where I would do what I had to do to keep them here. I think I've gotten better. Please. Yeah. I think I've gotten better, too, because you get more attention and they help more. 
So the debate rages on. Meanwhile, Indiana's voucher program continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Each year, the number of students has more than doubled. Now, is the cost of vouchers worth every penny, or will it cost Indiana public schools and taxpayers dearly? Only time will tell. Dan Klein, News 18.